Hello, hello, hello. Another late night with Peter Mon on Peter Vlogs Radio. Call in with your questions. Call in with your stories. <laughs> I would love to have a late night radio show like that. It is so hot in this car. I had the windows down and it was nice, but I have to turn the air on now. One of my things I hate the most is when you get a fountain pop and it melts all over the place. Can you see it like dripping down? There's like a pool of water down here. I've got to find some place to throw this away. Tanya and I, after the meeting tonight, tried to go to four restaurants and all of them were not serving. Well, one we couldn't get into because they were setting up for the fireworks. We, one of them we actually went into, sat down, and they sat us down, brought us menus. We knew what we were going to eat. Ten minutes later, the girl comes up, and she brings us water, and she's like, what can I get you guys to drink? And I was like, oh, I'll have a Dr. Pepper, and Tanya was like, I'll have some lemon for my water. And then I said, oh, Tanya, are you ready to order? Because we already knew what we wanted, because we were hungry as sin after having gone to the meeting. And the girl goes, oh, our kitchen's closed. And I go, your kitchen's closed? And she goes, yeah, you can still order from the bar, but you have to sit at the bar, which is like literally five feet from where we're sitting. And I said, we can order from the, the bar, but we have to sit at the bar. She was like, yeah. And Tony goes, why did they sit us down knowing that the kitchen was closed? She goes, yeah, I don't know. I'm like, this is insanity. So we just got up and left. And then... Um, we were shouting at people on the street as we were driving by and being foolish. And um, then Tanya finally was like, I just want to go this Blaze pizza. So she got a pizza. And I was like, she's like, what do you want? I go, there's nothing I want. I had two pieces of pizza last night of Alex's because the fettuccine was wrong. I haven't really eaten in two days. I'm starving. And she's like, well, what do you want? And I was like, I don't know. I go, there's nothing open late. She goes, well, like Taco Bell. And I go, yeah, I guess I could eat Taco Bell. So we're like on the way there. Now this is like at this point now, like four restaurants, right? Three or four restaurants that are closed that we can't get into. We've been driving around for 45 minutes after our meeting. And I said, I swear to you, I said, if this Taco Bell is closed, she goes, Peter, this Taco Bell is never closed. They close at 4 a.m. I said, I'm just saying, if this Taco Bell is closed, oh, cause Tony was like, you get Taco Bell, I'll get my pizza, and we'll sit on my patio and eat. And I said, that's really nice. That sounds really nice, because her son is home, so I wanted to see Nick. And so I said, if this Taco Bell is closed, Tanya, and I was joking, right? I said, I am done for the evening. <laughs> we drove to Taco Bell, and there was a sign taped to the drive through that said, uh, we are closing at 10 o'clock this evening due to maintenance. And she started laughing. I was like, Tanya, this is not funny. I am so hungry. She's like, well, what do you want? I said, I don't know. I said, I just wanted something from the grocery store. And then we said we were going to go out to eat. And then I got it in my mind that I was going to sit down and have a wedge salad somewhere. And uh, she's like, well, she's like, we can go somewhere else. I was like, Tanya, there is no place to go. So anyway, so I went home or I went back to her house. And then I went inside and talked to her husband for a while and her son because her son was there. But he was leaving to go hang out with some friends. So he's in town for till Monday. And, um. I'm about to throw this away this gas. So I uh, talked to him for a while and hung out with Tanya. She got Tanya got a dog, a new dog. Its name is Karma. And let me tell you what Karma looks like. Karma looks exactly like Boo Radley, but bigger. Like probably. Mm, she's like this tall and like this long, and I love her. So I talked to them for a little bit, and then Tanya and I sat in the patio while she was finishing up her pizza, and we talked, and then I left, and then I went to Taco Bell on the way home. Tanya's like, sweetie, you've got to eat something. I was like, I don't even want to eat at this point. She was like, just eat something. You can just, you know, so I was like, okay. So I went to uh, Taco Bell on the way home, because there's another Taco Bell. There's two, actually, on the way home. So I stopped at the one closest to her house, and... Um, I was so ready to get home and eat, and I got nachos bel grande, no no ground beef, and I got just beans, and I even looked in the bag and everything, and I got home. You guys, this is like 
I, it's like you can't even write this shit, right? I get home and there's no beans. It's all ground beef. I'm like, not just about grande. I was so pissed. So all I've had in the last 48 hours is my salad from Puccini's and a cheese quesadilla from Taco Bell. Not exactly the best diet in the entire world, but I'm sure that's not a surprise to anybody out there, so. I don't even know what I'm hungry for at this point. And tomorrow's 4th of July. Happy 4th of July, because you guys are all watching this on 4th of July. And um, we didn't really have anything to do. And we used to go downtown and watch it downtown with the fireworks, because they have really big fireworks from downtown. And um, we couldn't remember what we did last year. And so Alex was like, do you ever, does that ever happen to you? Like, you just can't remember what you guys did like a year ago. And so Alex is like, well, what do you want to do? And I said, oh, I don't care. We can hang out with like your mom and your brother and the kids and stuff like that. He goes, okay, that'll be fine. So he called his mom and he was like, what are you guys doing? And she was like, well, we're going to go to the parade. I think I already talked about this on here. I don't know if I talked about it in here, if we talked about it in marriage counseling, because we talked about it in marriage counseling too. So, um, cause we had marriage counseling tonight. And of course you talk about 4th of July marriage counseling. <laughs> I'm joking, but we did. But, um, she was like, oh, we're just going to go to the parade in the morning and then we don't know where we're going to go to the pool during the day. And then we're going to go to the fireworks tomorrow night. And Alex was like, okay, that sounds like fun. So. Um, oh yeah, I did share about it on here because I said we're going to use our new chair, our chairs that we bought last two years. We bought them two years ago with the backpack things on them. And um, so then today, our friend Aaron texted us and was like, "Hey, Melissa and Jason are coming over tomorrow. We're going to do the same thing we did last year." I never texted her back because um, I was talking to Alex, or did I text her back? I don't remember. But anyway, um, and she was like, "You guys should come over. Or it's just going to be us, you know, just like we did last year and whatever." And so I said to Alex, I said, well, do you want to do that instead? And he was like, well, I already told my mom that we were going to meet. And so I don't want to tell her now that we're not going to. Like, something better came along. I was like, yeah, let's just go hang out with your family. We'll have more fun anyway with the kids. The kids love, you know, fireworks and stuff. And Sebastian is two. And so, like, almost three. And so this stuff is just, like, meaning something to him. Like, he's just understanding all of this stuff, you know? He's so sweet. He, like, copies everything that Carlitos does. I was very, very productive today. Whenever I like in a rush, cause I know like stuff's gonna be closed for 4th of July. Like I got a lot of stuff done today. Um, I got up and I wrote and then I, um, what did I do? Oh, I, yeah. So I, then I got coffee and um, then I ran, went and ran errands and I had to, pick up PP's medicine, but I also had to pick up my medicine, so I picked it up at the same time, called it at the same time, picked it up. The line at the Costco pharmacy was so long, and um, everybody was there buying their fireworks at Costco, and they were buying these huge cupcakes that they had that looked so good, but I was like, oh, I don't think I should probably have those. <laughs> no, they look delicious. And um, so I went there, and then where else did I go? I went somewhere else on the way. Oh, I, I went to the bank because the banks are closed tomorrow. And a lot of banks are, I think, closed on Thursday, too. Oh, the other reason why um, I had to get a lot of stuff done is that my uncle's funeral is on Thursday. So I'm not going to be able to, like, do a lot of things that I would normally do um, that day. So I had to get up and get a bunch of stuff done. And then I kind of tidied up around the house. I did some more laundry. Um... Yeah, that was about it. And then Alex and I had our marriage counseling session at 6, which was great tonight. We had a really good session tonight. And uh, then he went home and fed the dogs and kind of hung out at the house for a little while and watched TV. And I went to the meeting with Tanya. And then after the meeting, um, Tanya and I tried to get something to eat, but that was just a complete disaster. And um, then Alex texted me when I was at Tanya's house and he was, um, so we have a friend that we're like, we have a couple that we're friends with and she was doing stuff with some of her girlfriends tonight. So the husband, 
was like, uh, ask Alex if you want to go out and get drinks. So they went over to their friend's house to get, like have some drinks or something. I don't know. Alex just got home. He was like, as I was leaving, he was like on his way home. So, um, but apparently they had a lot of fun and yeah, so that was my day today. That was about it. July is always such a weird holiday for me. You know, it's like, it's not an emotional holiday for me because I've really never spent, it's funny as I say this, I was going to say I've never really spent 4th of July with like my family. Um, but a couple years ago, I think four or five years ago, Alex and I spent it with my dad and my stepmom. We took a friend over there, our friend Heather. And um, we swam in the pool all day long. My dad cooked out. And then they have fireworks. Well, my dad lives on a lake. And so they had fireworks off the lake. And so we watched them. That was fun. And then the year before my mom passed away, she and um, my ex and I went with Tanya and her husband to, we went downtown. And we like sat on the lawn of this university. And we watched the fireworks. And I remember my mom was so funny because like, uh, Tanya and Eric were trying to have like a romantic time and like kiss on this blanket and stuff. We'd have this picnic like on the blanket first. And my mom kept on. My mom was like somebody that would like, if somebody was like making out or something, she'd like get real tickled by it. And she thought it was funny, you know. And she'd be like, Oh my God, they're having they're having a moment. They're having a moment. And then Tanya got laughing so hard, and it was fun. But usually, I never would spend like I, I usually never spend Fourth of July with family like growing up, I never did, you know? I usually always, I was with my dad. I, well, I, I mean, like, my dad when we were at the boat in the summer. But, like, as I got older, like, in my 20s and stuff, and in high school, I didn't. Um, my family wasn't big on having family barbecues and stuff like that. The last couple years, Alex and I, if the 4th of July is on a weekend, we would usually go out downtown. Um, one year, we went with his family, and we, like, had a barbecue at his uh, mom's house, and then we went downtown and we all were in like this parking lot because <laughs> there's not really a lot of great places downtown to go. Um, and then one of our friends owns a bar downtown. And so we sat outside with, she like, we weren't in the bar. We were like outside it, but um, it's like this, it has like this uh, area in front where you can sit with like chairs and stuff. That's like part of the bar. But the bar was closed down because it was 4th of July. So she and I and her son and her husband, we all drove down there and Alex. And uh, we sat like on these chairs, like on the sidewalk and we watched the fireworks. That was really cool that year. Um, and we like barbecued out first and then we went down there. But we always do something different. Like it seems like every year, like last year, well, the last two years, yeah, the last two years we've gone over to Aaron's house now we you know I guess maybe last year and then the year before that the two years before that and the year in between was when we went downtown with Alex's mom but Alex really doesn't care about fireworks either I do I like watching him and um, so It's right, I was right here last night when I said I think fireworks were magical. Isn't that funny? But I was going the other way. Um, I don't know how I remember that. There's this movie that I love called The Miss Firecracker Contest with Holly Hunter. I've talked about it on here a lot. I used to always walk, watch it on 4th of July. But I only have a, like a VCR copy of it now and I don't even know where that is. So I think it would be hard for me to watch it this year. Maybe it's on YouTube or something. I'll look and see. We're not going to really do anything during the day. Alex was going to catch up on some work. And I was like, babe, please don't work on 4th of July. And he's like, well, are you going to make videos? And I go, yeah, but that's not really work. <laughs> he goes, no. He goes, but it's still like, I go, it takes me like an hour to make videos. He's like, well, can I do some work? While? I was like, well, you can work while I'm making videos. And he was like, okay. So we're going to like work for like an hour or two. But then we're going to go to maybe go to the pool. But the problem is, is that the pool is always so packed on 4th of July in our neighborhood. Um... There are like, rac oh, a little baby raccoons going up the tree. Um, so I know when we go down there tomorrow, there's going to be like 100 people in this little tiny pool. <laughs> Alex will lay out. He, no shit's given. And I'll be like, I am not laying out here with all of these hundreds of people. I want to 
wanted to go for a swim tonight, but our dinner plans messed up me getting home so late. I didn't even get home until almost 12. And then I sat there and ate while I watched Family Feud. I don't know what it is about that show, but I just love that show so much. It's so relaxing to me. I don't think I've ever spent a 4th of July with my cousin Caroline. Like, I can't remember one, and I don't know what my mom used to do. Back in the day, like, after she got sober, I feel like she always went to, like, sober people always have, like, parties on 4th of July, like, barbecues and stuff, and they invite everybody. I feel like my mom used to go to, like, recovery, uh, like, barbecues and parties and stuff on 4th of July. Because, you know, whenever there's a holiday, like, sober people always try to, like, host stuff for those people that don't have families, so they're not, like, feeling like they're all alone at home. And my mom was really good about going to that kind of stuff and, you know, hanging out with her sponsor and, like, her friends and recovery and stuff like that. So, I think that's what she used to do. Poor Boo Radley is so terrified of the fireworks. People were shooting them off tonight. And um, I don't know where you live, but if you live in Indiana, I swear to God, a week before and a week after, people are constantly shooting uh, fireworks off in the neighborhood. You hear that? Like, do you hear that, you know? And uh, just pop, 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 pop. And Boo Radley doesn't even know what it is. He's so confused. He just crawls up on me with his nails. He's terrified. It's so sweet, but he just can't handle it. It's like, he doesn't know what it is. And I was sitting there and I was watching him tonight. I was just holding him. And, um, cause he lets me hold him like a little baby, you know? And I was like holding him. I was like, Boo Radley, it's okay, honey. It's okay. And he was like shaking. He was so nervous. And I thought, you know, to a little dog, to a little animal that doesn't know any better, like they really have no concept of what that is. They have no idea, um, of what those sounds are like. And, you know... It's got to be so scary for uh, little animals who have no idea. Who Radley's the same way with thunderstorms. I've been meaning to get those thunder jackets for them. Um, but Tucker and PB don't really care. Like, they're not really bothered by all of that. But Boo Radley is terrified. He just is really, really scared of just any loud noises and storms and stuff like that. You think animals can have personality disorders like Asperger's syndrome and stuff? I wonder if that if they can. Or like schizophrenia. Like how would that even work for an animal, I wonder? There's this model home that's just brand new that I keep on passing by. You can see it's like fully decorated inside and it's absolutely gorgeous. Do you ever wonder why on model homes they keep all of the lights on 24 hours a day? Like, do we not need to save electricity? <laughs> that model home is like 10,000 square feet. I'm like, that's a nice model home. Who can afford a 10,000 square feet house just out in the middle of nowhere? There's another model on him right there. It's got a TV on in the living room. All these neighborhoods with these <laughs> staged living rooms and bedrooms and stuff. My God. My dad and my stepmom used to do a lot for uh, Fourth of July. They used to take the boat out and have a barbecue and have people over and stuff. But they don't do that anymore. Like they're just they just really don't. They aren't social at all, really. I don't know why. My dad just really likes to be by himself, you know, and not be, I mean, like with my stepmom, but, but like they like to just be out there and my dad's house is on this lake and it's very peaceful. And, um, you know, I look back on that growing up on a lake and... It's hard to explain what that's like, but like I definitely took it for granted, you know? It was, it was kind of spooky sometimes, because my dad's at the very end of this like um, private drive, and um, 
So, like, I can remember, like, being out there by myself when I was in high school. And if you're sitting out, it's like, I hated to sit outside. I remember one summer I read um, The Pelican Brief. This is the, not the Pelican Brief, uh, the client, James Gr uh, John Grisham, which is kind of scary anyway, and it kind of takes place like in the backwoods of Louisiana a little bit, if I remember correctly. And um, and I loved, I used to love John Grisham books. I read them all the time. And um, but I was, I can remember sitting out there. I think it was like dog sitting for them or something. Maybe it was when I was like uh, 18 in college or something. And I remember dog sitting out there, being out there. I was out there alone. And I was sitting outside at night. And, I, you know, you hear all the sounds off of the, the lake and stuff like that. And one of the things that's really spooky about being on a lake is that... Um, voices carry on a lake. So if you hear fishermen like out there at like, let's say, you know, three o'clock in the morning and they're whispering to each other, it sounds like they're sitting a foot in front of you. And, um, so it was very terrifying out there. And here, this is a true story. Have I talked about this on here? I don't know, but it was funny because, um, so we have some family friends and, um, I ran into their son who is, how old is he? He's 20. Um, yeah, because he's in college. He's, like, almost done with college. And um, they live out there. And he was like, did you ever hear about the Upside Down Church? And I was like, dude, listen. I was like, I've been hearing about that since high school. And he was like, no. Or not the Upside Down Church. The church steeple. And he's like, really? They say that there's a church steeple underneath the lake. And that there was a whole city there and stuff. And I was like, well, this was, like, a while ago. I may have mentioned it on here because I had this conversation, like, I don't know been a while. So he was like, um, was it him that said it to me? Now I don't remember who said it to me. It's somebody else that lives out there. Who was it him? Well, he and I had the conversation too. If it wasn't him that initially brought it to me, I don't remember. But anyway, that there was like this town underneath where my dad lives, right? Or my, where like the lake is that supposedly they like flooded, like all the people left and then they flooded it and they dammed it up. And it's like been this rumor since I was in high school, right? And I was like, there is no truth to this. And supposedly there's a church that's so far underneath the water that when people like swim over it and stuff, that they've said they've hit, like when the water is low, they've like hit the church steeple and stuff. And um, it's just like these, you know, wives tales. And they say that there was like a grave graveyard underneath there that supposedly is haunted and all this stuff. That's why people see a lot of hauntings out there. Cause apparently people have seen a lot of like ghosts and spirits out there and stuff. And when I was growing up, weird stuff would happen. We had an Airedale when I was growing up named Clifford and Clifford was sit sitting underneath the light in the living, in like the entryway. We had this like chandelier light that sat down and it, um, it was kind of more of like a lantern kind of thing. And he was sitting underneath it and he would just bark like crazy at this light. It was the weirdest thing. And, um, just random stuff would happen out there that was kind of spooky. But anyway, um, so I looked it up on Google and it's true, you guys. There was a city underneath the lake that my dad lives on and all the people had moved out. There was nobody there. It was like this German settlement town and there was nobody there supposedly, but they don't know when they flooded the town. And um, there's no recollection of a church being there, but the city is so old and they don't have an accurate map of what the city looked like. So they don't know, like it could have been, um, there could have been a church, there could have been a graveyard and we wouldn't know that. And, but supposedly there's been accounts written by people that lived there that said things about going to church and going to the graveyard and things like that. Um, so, but we don't like, nobody really knows if that's the case or not. Is that not, that is almost kind of like some poltergeist kind of stuff. Um, but it is a true story. I found it out that it's right underneath there and it had a name and everything, the city. And then all the people moved out and they flooded it. And that's so weird to think like when I look out like, you know, my dad's back window that, uh, people lived underneath the water down there. It's crazy. My friends and I used to go out there and we would like, when I was staying out there for the weekend and stuff or in the summer, I stayed out there for a lot of time. I stayed out there a lot in the summers. Um, and they would come out and I would take my friends out on the boat during the day and then we would go swimming because my dad has a pool and stuff. And, um, but then like at night, like my friends 
um, would either stay over. My parents were very, very cool, I mean, about my girlfriend staying over. I, although my mom claims she never knew I was gay, she never had any issue with my friends being over at my house late and things like that. Um, so I don't know what that was about, but my girlfriend stayed over. We'd all sleep over in the basement floor and stuff like that. And we watched, my dad has a really nice basement and we would watch like scary movies. And, um, oh my God, we used to get so scared down there, especially like in storms because my dad doesn't just live on the lake, but he asked also, he asked, he also lives kind of in the woods. And so there's these huge trees around the lake. Um, and it's beautiful out there, but it's very scary. And so when it storms, like the trees sway and stuff like that. And you know, you can see like the lightning out there and it's very, very scary. And um, I hated being out there by myself. Even when like my dad and my stepmom, like, cause they were pretty social when I was in high school, they would go to like events and think fundraisers and stuff that were out to dinner and they would go out to dinner and then they would come back. And I, I, But like when I was out there alone, I'd be like, when are you coming home? And I'll never forget seeing that movie. Uh, uh, what's that called? I talked about this on here not too long ago, and so many people said it. Uh, when a Stranger Calls. Uh, but I can remember seeing that movie, and I just couldn't get that out of my head. Plus, the house, like, was... Had so many little nooks and crannies in it. It's, I mean, they still live in it. Had so many nooks and crannies in it that, like... I had the whole upstairs. So to be upstairs, right, by myself, watching a movie, and then to hear the rest of the house, uh, like, moving, or, like, you wouldn't know if that, like, somebody had just come inside the house. And my dad's house is kind of, like, it's hard to explain, but, like, from the drive, from the back, it just, it goes straight down. It has this huge brick wall behind it that's on the lake. Um, but on... From the front, it, like, is, like, the garages are this way, and then the front is this way, and then it has, like, turrets and stuff like that. And so, um, when they're not there one day, I'll just have to go out there and film their house. Um, but, like, when you're looking out the front window, like, they have these big bay windows at the front. Like, when you're looking out the front window, somebody could be standing right there and you wouldn't even see it because it's so dark. And it's so, like, shrouded in trees because you're in the woods at that point that you can't really see anything. Like, you drive down through the woods and then you turn into the driveway. It's it's really creepy. And um, you can't see either neighbor from the house either because they have these huge brick walls up around it. And um, in the summer, they have awnings. So, you can't see any of the neighbors. And um, both of the neighbors on either side were not there very often anyway, but their house is also like the neighbor to the left, their house faced the other way. So you couldn't see anything but the back of the house and the people to the right, like their house, like the only thing on that side was their um, like master bedroom and bathroom. So you couldn't really see anything to that either. So you felt very, very isolated and they were probably about a city block away on either side of the house. So it wasn't like the houses were right next to each other. They were, you know, far away that if something happened and you know, with my imagination, I was always imagining that something was going to happen to me, but no, I survived out there. So my stepmom hated being out there by herself. She absolutely hated it. stuff that happened out there. Like, trying to think, like, through some of the stuff that happened. The dog stuff was really weird. You know, people say that dogs are intuitive anyway. That happened a lot. It's, well, just with him, really. Um, but, like, they have a, uh, a gated, like, so they have, it's all brick. They have brick, uh, like, walls all around, like, huge brick walls all around, like, the pool and stuff and the inside of the house. It, it, you, there's no way you can scale it or get into it or anything. But, like, they have, like, this metal, uh, I don't know how to explain it. So the house is, like, looks like something you see in, like, the French countryside. So it has, like, this metal gate 
end of the brick wall that you have to like lock with this bolt lock and it has like an alarm on it to the pool. And sometimes like the lock would just like, the, the door would just be unlocked and like the dog would get out in the yard and then like go down to the water. And so it would be like midnight and I'd have to go down to the water's edge through this gate that I had no idea how it was open to get the dog back inside. And you're like, how is this gate even open? You know, it was very spooky. All right, I cannot believe I'm at 30 minutes, and uh, you know the you know what didn't go off once, so I'm gonna stop. I'll be right back. I was just thinking about spooky stuff that happened to me when I was growing up. <laughs> Wouldn't it be weird if I just kept the whole vlog all in black? <laughs> you couldn't see me at all except for the lights. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> did any of you jump or did you see that coming? I think I've like told all the stories on here, but I remember I used to go spend like two or three weeks with my Aunt Janie and my um, Uncle Marv in uh, Fort Wayne where my dad is from when I was growing up. And um, they had a farm, like this huge farm, and like with a legit barn and they raised steer and sheep and they had, they uh, farmed soy, I think. C corn and soy, I think. So anyway, I would go up there and stay with them like two or three weeks in the summer. It usually like uh, coincided with the tennis championships in Indianapolis that my parents would go to. And both of them went to that even when they were divorced. So I was thinking about, I think I've shared this story in here before, but whenever I would go up there, the Three Rivers Festival was always going on at the same time. And it had a lot to do with agriculture. And so my uncle would go and he would take um, my cousins with him, my two cousins. And they would spend like three days. And so my Aunt Janie and I would be alone for three days together. Well, she at the time worked in a grocery store. Well, she didn't work in a grocery store. She worked for like a distribution company and she would go into grocery stores and she would like stock their shelves. She did this like as a part-time job. She would like stock their shelves with um, like pantyhose, uh, anything that was like not food. So like pantyhose, pens, pencils, um, what else? Oh, shoot. I can't remember. Like, light bulbs, things like that. It was fun. I would go with her, and I'd be like, Aunt Janie, can I help? She's like, yeah. And she would show me how you pull out the pantyhose all the way to the back, and then you stack, like, the newest ones in the back. So when people buy the newest, the ones that are in front, they're actually, like, you know, the newest ones are in the back. And, um... So we would do that, and then like we would do that like late at night because you would have to go in like when the grocery stores, like people weren't. So we would take a nap in the early evening and like watch a movie, and then we would go and we would um, do that at like nine or ten o'clock at night. And I remember like we would come back, and she'd always be very very scared to come back to the farm. Now I have an imagination, but my aunt Janie has an imagination too. Okay, so imagine an eight year old and probably what was a, I don't know, 40 or 50 year old at the time and our imaginations running wild, right? I remember she had this old green car and it had one of those seats that like, you know, the, do you remember those seats? My grandma had one too, that like it had just was one seat all the way across. Do you remember that? And my Aunt Janie had that and we would go get Arby's after we did this and I remember we would like um, eat Arby's in the car and we would get roast beef sandwiches and uh, potato cakes and uh, Jamocha shakes and then we would sit in the car and we would eat it and it was so hot because it was like August you know out in the middle of uh, Indi up, uh, northern Indiana and so anyway we would like go back to the farm and she'd always be like so scared that like somebody would be out there now, I don't know if you've ever been, like, on a farm in the Midwest before, or I guess a farm anywhere, really, but, like, she and, so she, her husband, my uncle, um, but this is my, my dad's sister, he, um, his parents owned the land, so they had a house probably, I don't know, three or four miles down the street, and they farmed land. And then my uncle and my aunt farmed the land. And then there wasn't probably another farm for like five, 10 miles down the street. So your nearest neighbor was five or six, five or 10 miles down the street. So, I mean, you wouldn't even see another house until then, right? So 
it was, uh, you really were isolated out there in the middle of nowhere. And I remember she just would get so scared. Like, she would, like, kind of creep up on the house. And sometimes she would drive by, like, two or three times before she would go down. Because it was, like, this long gravel driveway. And um, she would say, okay, I don't think anybody's there and stuff. Because you couldn't see. You would drive... Like, the driveway took you, it would go all the way down, and it was a one-story house, and then it would take you either to the to the uh, barn, or it would take you left, and then you would go behind the house and park, and then go in through the back. So, if somebody was back there, you couldn't see, right? And so, she would always be really scared about that. Well, she would always be like, oh, I hope, no, you know, I'm scared that somebody's here, I'm scared that somebody's here, and I'm like, Aunt Janie, we're fine, we're fine, <laughs> you know, isn't that funny? Oh, that yellow light came on now, after half an hour of it not filming, being fine. But anyway, so I remember this one night, we came back, and there were like all of these motorcyclers, uh, motorcycle guys, there was probably like six of them in the driveway, just sitting on their motorcycles, and they were really close to the house, like they weren't close to the street, it looked like they lived there, they were like down by the house, and I remember like we walked past, and um, I remember my Aunt Janie telling me to get down, she was like, get down, and so like I got down, and we like drove by the, ho the house, and she like went fast, and so she was like, I remember she kind of, like, didn't know what to do, and so she, like, drove, like, you could kind of, like, see it down this other side road, so she went there, and I don't know what she saw or whatever, but she's like, okay, we're gonna come back later, and we, like, she took me somewhere, I can't remember, like, to get a Coke or something, we went somewhere and had a Coke, I do remember that, and we sat there and talked, and I, and this, you have to remember, this is before cell phones and all this kind of stuff, so it's not like she could get a hold of my uncle, and, um, my whole family on my dad's side lives in Fort Wayne, so she was like, well, let's go back and see how things are. And I remember we went back there, and um, if I were, this happened twice with the motorcycle guys. There was two different occasions that it happened, and one time we went back and there was nobody there, and we went inside. But the other time, we like drove by there, and it was like had been like a long time later, and there were still people there. Like there were still like I think when we came back, there were like two motorcycle guys in the driveway, and she was. I mean, completely sketched out about it. And we went to my grandma's house and stayed there for the night. And my grandma was like, it was like one o'clock in the morning. And she was like, what are you guys doing here? And we're like, my Aunt Janie was like, I just think that we should stay here for the night. I think she was trying to play it off not to get scared for me, you know? But she was really, really scared by the whole thing. So um, that was like something that happened. But for years later, people would always laugh at her and I and say, oh, you guys always think that motorcycle people are out to kill you. But I remember it. There were people, there was like motorcycle people in her driveway and they weren't like by the road. They were like by the house. I can still see it. Like, it's very creepy. And like, I wonder like what would have happened if we had been there or if we had gone down there, you know, and all that kind of stuff. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with motorcycles. I'm not saying that. But they weren't supposed to be in her driveway by her house. And it was nobody that she knew. It never came out that it was somebody that she knew. The other thing is my grandfather, my dad's dad, was one of the first people in that area to solve a murder case. Um, he was, my grandfather was a homicide detective. And, um... He solved a murder of this woman that had killed her husband, and then she had um, taken his body and put it out in a lake and, like, tied, like, a cement block to it or something like that. But my grandfather was the one that solved the case. And um, my dad said that they used to watch... He and uh, my, my dad and my uh, grandfather used to watch Perry Mason together. If you guys don't know what Perry Mason is, Perry Mason's, like, a detective show, and it's, like, a courtroom drama, you know, whatever... And um, they would watch it. And my dad said that, like, within the first five minutes of the show, my grandfather would always be able to solve the case. So, well, interesting fact that I have a grandfather that was a homicide. He was a homicide detective. Now, I, I look at that sometimes. I think that's so strange because I'm so, you know, interested in all of that. And um, he was also in the military. He was in World, World War II. And um, my grandmother got pregnant. And then he was um, sent overseas. So, she had my dad. My dad's the youngest of five. She had my dad after he was in Germany. He was stationed. My grandfather was stationed on the ground in Germany. And um, my dad actually did not meet his dad until he was four years old. And that's when he came home, was when my dad was four. It's crazy when you think back on that. Like, what a different world that was, you know? Jan and I used to 
just have so much fun together. We always had these crazy stories and always thought stuff was happening. And she'd sing uh, uh, Tanya Tucker and she'd say, do you think I could be a country singer? I'd say, yes, Aunt Janie, you could be a country singer. You could be a country singer. And then she would come down every... Um, so the state fair in Indiana is a really, really big deal in the summer. It's like, it's always the last week before all the kids go to school, but now they've totally screwed it up in Indiana, and now the kids are already in school when the, the fair is going on, which why is beyond me. And so, like, people that do 4-H participate in the fair a lot. And my cousins always participated in the fair. It just stopped. I'm in the middle of my great story. <laughs> I'm sitting in the Meyer parking lot. And, um... It's always a weird place to be late at night. It is 2.40 a.m. I had to go in there to get Pee-Pee his uh, hot dogs for his medicine. That's the only way he'll take it. Which our vet said was completely fine. She's like, he's lean enough that I'm not too worried. My eyes are itching. She's like, he's lean enough that I'm not too worried about it. Just don't give him too much. We don't give him too much. So... What is going on? There's like something all over my hand. I think it's from the bottom of the camera where it like melts on that thing. But um, so I was like, I'm gonna go into Meyer and get these hot dogs and then I got them some food too because I'm not sure how much dog food we have left. And um, I have that new cleaner, hand cleaner, sitting on my counter that I need to bring for my car. But I want to listen to my audiobook for a little bit, so I was like, I'm going to get some treats. I'll probably taste like a few of these things and put them away, but the first thing I got were these Planters Crunchers. These are cinnamon brown sugar. I just wanted to try them because they looked good. And then I got... A water. Dasani is honestly like my least favorite water. It's like soaking, it's like melting already. But it was the only kind of water that they had cold in there. And then I got sour cream and onion Pringles. I love them so much. Somebody said to me today, they're like, when are you going to do the diet that Alex is doing? I'm ordering my food probably tomorrow because Alex and I will be together so I can do that then. As soon as the food comes, I'll be starting my diet. But until then... Do you remember this back in the day? When kids would do this in school. And I always wanted to do it and I could never make it work. Hi, oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit, that scared me. That guy's like on one of those cart things. <laughs> Could you guys see that? I scared the shit out of me. God, speaking of David Lynch, I feel like I'm in a David Lynch movie. One of the things I love to do is I love to eat sweet stuff with sour stuff. So like, eat, eat a potato chip. You put an M&M in your mouth. Mmm. He walks completely fine. Why is he even riding that thing? I didn't know there was white M&M's, but apparently they're for 4th of July. Red, white, and blue mix. Hmm. Let's try these planters crunchers. Crispy coated peanut, cinnamon brown sugar. 
there's this girl in her front and they're wearing sunglasses and I'm so confused. They went in with their boyfriends. You guys ever just sit in parking lots? Okay, I'll tell you what these taste like. They taste like a peanut crunched with a cinnamon toast crunch cereal thing. They're okay. I wouldn't say they're the best. I'll give them to Tanya because I know Eric, I know Alex won't eat them. So maybe her and Eric will eat them. There are all kinds of people going in here. I wonder why this girl is sitting out here with like Ray-Ban sunglasses on in the middle of the dark. Her and her girlfriend. I'm not her girlfriend, but I'm not her girl. Her hair's like wet and crinkly. Do you remember in high school? All of my friends smelled like that Aussie hair salad. They would all use that Aussie hair salad. Do you remember what I'm talking about? It comes in a purple bottle. Do they still make that? And we would do hot oil treatments, those VO5 hot oil treatments. Oh my God, I loved those. And our hair. And then true story, we'd wash our hair with the Aussie hair salad if we wanted to smell good, but during, they're going back into the mire with their sunglasses on. But during the day, like if we were getting up ready for school, we would wash our hair with that mane and tail. <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> I can't believe we actually used to use that mane and tail. I always used to use, well, my junior and senior year, I started going to my stepmom's hairstylist to get my hair cut. So, they use those Sebastian hair products. Do you remember those? Are those even still out there? So, I would use those Sebastian hair products. My friends would use that dippity do stuff. <laughs> and they have like, all had perms, you know? So they would like put it in their hair and crunch it. Do you remember they would crunch it dry? Or you would put that like wet hairspray, that Aussie hairspray in, and then crunch your hair dry. But then they would leave the bangs, and then they would blow dry the bangs straight up like this. And then as they were blow drying it up, they would spray it with hairspray. And so your bang would stick like straight up. We used to call it the state fair claw, the state, state fair hair. We call it the claw back in the day. It's hilarious. This girl totally spotted that I was vlogging. She walked real close to the car. The girl with the sunglasses. And her boyfriend that you can see all of his underwear sagging down. I do not understand the sagging pant thing. I, I, for the life of me, I will never understand that. Can somebody please explain that to me? Why anybody thinks that that is a good look. And isn't that like really kind of like 2001? Do people still do that today? I really want to like these so bad, especially since I paid $3.99 for them, but they suck. I don't remember like other products that I used in high school. Isn't that funny? But like that was like a fun thing for us would be to like go to the drugstore. There also was, I, I'm almost positive, I could be wrong about this. 
But I don't remember there being like any like Walmarts. Like there was a Target in high school, but am I wrong? But I don't remember Walmart when I was in high school. I remember Target, but Target was a lot smaller. I do remember that when I was growing up, there was Ben Franklin. Do you guys remember Ben Franklin's? And it was kind of like a Walgreens, but bigger. And I remember I used to um, beg my mom for these Alice in Wonder paper doll, paper doll, Alice in Wonderland paper dolls. Oh shoot! Mm, I mm. Dog hair or something like that. And <laughs> that's classy. And she finally got them for me. I was so excited. Kind of like a mukbang. We used to go to Hooks Drugs when I was growing up. But like my friends and I would go to, you know, Walgreens maybe? I don't know. Buy like our hair products and stuff there. But that was always like a fun thing for us to do. But the hot oil treatments, like that was like a good Friday night. I remember we would all get those hot oil treatments and then go over to my friends, Margaret and Michelle's house, and we would do like hot oil treatments in our hair and we would watch movies. And we used to love this movie called The All Nighter. And it was with Susanna Hoffs from the Bangles. And it also had Joan Cusack in it and Dee Dee Pfeiffer, who is Michelle Pfeiffer's uh, less talented sister. Sorry, I just said it. <laughs> but it was like one of our favorite movies and it was about these girls that were, I don't know how I remember all this, I own it. They One year my friends bought it for me. Like I must've been that year, like my senior year in high school, they bought it for me like uh, as like a graduation present or something. But. It's these three girls, and it's their last night before they're graduating from Pacifica College in California. It's such a bad movie, but it's so bad it's good. It's called The All-Nighter. We love this movie. And there was this real cute guy in it, and he was a surfer, and he hung out with them all the time. And uh, I don't know how I remember this line, but we used to always say it to each other. He's, he'd say, a babe in the kitchen's worth two on the beach. <laughs> And then somebody in the movie says, you don't know what you don't know. Or you, when I ever, whenever I say that line, like what you don't know is a lot, somebody in the movie says, cause you don't know what you don't know, you know? And then somebody says, what you don't know is a lot. And that comes from that movie. I don't know how I just remembered all this movie stuff from that, but that's where that's from. So if you ever have a chance to see the all nighter, you should, it's a great movie. I mean, it's a horrible movie, but it's a great movie. It's like up there with like showgirls and <laughs> strip tease with Demi Moore and all those movies, you know, that you have to see just at least once in your life. I mean, you really do. It is so hot in here. Well, listen, I'm gonna listen to a little bit of my audiobook, so I'm gonna get off here because I wanna go home and I don't know what we're gonna do, go to the pool tomorrow. And um, I hope you guys are having a wonderful 4th of July. And I hope my scary stories didn't scare you too much. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye. I did want to say one last thing real quick. Um, today when we were in the gas station, this guy was in a, had military uniform on and Tanya bought him his fountain pop and stuff. And he was real appreciative of that. And she said, thank you for your service. And um, you know, my friend, my best friend's son was in the Marines and I think it's important on times like this to acknowledge our servicemen and women um, that are away from their families or have spent time away from their families or dedicated time to our safety. So I would like to just extend on 4th of July a thank you to all of our servicemen and women out there, past or present, for your service, for giving away time, you know, giving up time away from your families. Um, and especially I want to say a thank you out there to Amy. She knows who she is, who has shared a lot of her life with me and is always in my live streams and is currently pregnant as her husband is gone in the service. And I just want you to know that, um, sweetheart, I'm thinking of you today. 
and you know, in this crazy world that we live in, it makes me feel better knowing that there are people out there that care enough to risk their lives and I don't want that to go unnoticed. So I just want to say thank you to anybody out there that is in the service or has a family member in the service or a loved one in the service. Thank you so much. And that, you know, extends to the National Guard and everything. Thank you for your service. I love you guys and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.